Welcome and thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Low Cost Log Network Configuration and IT Monitoring Solutions. I'm Mark Smith on the Government Marketing Team and I'm kicking off today's event. We'll get started in a moment, but first let's consider, first let's cover a few housekeeping items. The webcast is being recorded and will be sent out in a few days along with slides. Phones are muted and participants are encouraged to type questions into the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. Okay, so let's get started. Today our presenter is going to be Kevin Devalos, and, and I'll be assisting. Kevin's a, an engineer on the, the federal SE team. Our agenda is going to be to talk about the Solovens IT operations management model, as well as low-cost IT monitoring solutions and low-cost log and network configuration solutions. These are part of the Solowinds portfolio, and you know Solowinds has dozens of products, and this, these are more of the entry-level products that are designed for smaller configurations or branch offices, things where um, they may not have tools in place at this time. So we'll be covering them both from a slides perspective as well as a demonstration to talk about how it works and how they can be used to improve troubleshooting and problem management, things of that nature. And we have some slides and Q&A at the end as well. So as part of the setup of this is that the landscape for IT is always changing and it's a complicated environment with lots of dependencies and changing environments with virtualization, cloud, and everything else. It's challenging for customers to be able to manage all the technology and figure out how to find the problem, resolve it quickly, and move on with using the technology to solve their problems versus you know working on the problems. And the whole issue of digital performance is a very time-consuming issue for the IT teams that have to be responsible for maintaining it, and it's very costly. It's you know this, these are corporate type of data slides that come from Deloitte, but it's not you know the, the government has the same challenges where they're spending time and resources solving problems to enhance the digital performance, and um, doesn't always support the mission that they're trying to achieve. They they just want to use the technology, so. When we, SolarWinds has a model called the IT Operations Management, which essentially involves monitoring the full stack of different technologies from the network to the systems and the servers and the database to understand all the different aspects and making sure that you're aligning the uh, your, your IT management team with the technology tools to track and implement the changes and, and make sure everything gets resolved efficiently. Um, it also, there's security elements that you can't ever take an eye off security and making sure that your configurations are compliant and that you're doing everything you can to patch and upgrade and protect yourselves. And um, of course, this all has to be done with, with the limited time and budget, and that's where the challenges come in. So as we discussed, you know, a lot of environments have lots of tools or lots of different technologies that are managed separately, and it's difficult and it makes it complex. When you take a, a solution like some that, that SolarWinds offers, you can simplify, create a, a knock view or a single pane of glass where you have more visibility into the relationships and the correlations and things of that nature. And this is essentially a graphic that shows how the operations, the IT operations management portfolio works where, you know, SolarWinds is able to monitor all the different aspects of IT, the orange part, whether it's the network or the application or the parts in the middle, we're able to provide service management to track the, the, uh, the uh, activities and the security to make sure it's done properly so that, you know, wherever your technology exists and whether you're an IT security user or a network user or, an, or a systems user, you can get the information and you have the same information as your colleagues and you can make informed decisions. So this is a bit of an eye chart, but it shows you the whole portfolio of products that we have at SolarWinds and in, this, in the ITOM family. And it's essentially application performance management on the top, database and infrastructure and network in the middle and the security and services on the bottom. Um, we're not going to talk about all this today, obviously, because we're here to talk about the specific um, products, IP monitor and QB syslog and CAT tools. So with that, I'm going to introduce Kevin to present the content and move forward from here. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. So yeah, so we're going to talk about IP monitor. 
uh, and the Kiwi Cat tools. Uh, they're great products for customers who don't have anything currently monitoring or they're maybe small customers, you know, maybe something like an insurance company, a small doctor's office, something like that, where you need monitoring, but, you know, you don't really need, uh, you don't have the big bucks to spend. Well, uh, first product we want to talk about, first tool is IP Monitor. Great tool, quick to install. Uh, it provides you key metrics uh, such as, you know, CPU, memory. Uh, you can do some, there's a dashboard, there's uh, maps you can apply as well. So nice, nice tool. Uh, you can uh, monitor your Windows servers as well and all your Cisco devices. Uh, moving on to our next slide. Uh, Kiwi Syslog Server. So Kiwi Syslog Server has been around for a very long time, probably since the early 90s, 2000s. A very robust uh, Syslog Server uh, can do quite much, quite a bit, just uh, out of the box. Um, some of the specs on it can handle up to 2 million messages per hour. Uh, you can get centralized monitoring. You can uh, actually uh, get Windows logs as well with our free Windows log tools, uh, forwarding tools. Uh, a lot of built-in action, too, with this. Uh, I was using a syslog a long time ago when I was in Noct. Some of the actions that you can do is send, like, emails to, uh, to engineers. You can play sounds. Uh, you can forward events, forward loggings as well. Uh, so if you have uh, another, let's say you have a, another, maybe one of our SIM products or something like that, and you want to send logs to that uh, particular trap, you can do that as well, that syslog, uh, forward it through Kiwi syslog. So the next uh, tool I want to talk about is uh, Kiwi Cat Tools. So Kiwi Cat Tools uh, is great for backing up your network configurations, uh, anything like Cisco, Juniper, anything basically with a command line. So if you're not currently backing up your network devices, uh, you really need to take a look at Kiwi Cat Tools, uh, a very good product for its price point. Uh, it'll you can automate your backups. Uh, you can actually do bulk changes as well. You can do uh, uh, configuration changes and push those uh, out uh, automated. Some great tools uh, to use, especially if you're not backing up uh, your routers or switches or any of your devices. It's definitely something you really need to look into. Uh, great stuff out of the box. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, that's one thing about all these tools. They're very intuitive. Uh, they're very quick to pick up on and very simple to set up. So, and along with that, they're very powerful. They really will give you those key performance uh, metrics that you're looking for at a very low po uh, price point. All right. So, uh, let's get into the demo. We talked enough about it, so let's take a look. I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to share out my screen. Let's see what we have here. Give me a second, and we'll get this work in. All right, awesome. So here is IP Monitor, <clears throat> great little tool. You can do uh, a network discovery. Uh, the way that it talks to your different nodes is through SMP or WMI. Um, so once you do a discovery, it'll actually pull information in and it'll actually post it to this uh, summary dashboard right out of the box. It'll do things like go ahead and group your devices by uh, vendor types, Cisco, uh, Foundry, Microsoft, Juniper, so uh, quite a few different vendors that it supports. Well, it'll support any vendor that's doing SNMP or WMI. So that's going to be Windows and pretty much any of your Linux or, or network devices. Uh, once you start bringing in your devices, uh, and it's going to start collecting these key metrics, such as CPU, memory, bandwidth utilization. It will actually sit here and you notice there's a top 10 of each one. Uh, this is all automated. Once you run your discovery, it will start taking these calculations and start um, bringing them here on the dashboard. Then you can see the things that are bubbling up that's having issues. Uh, you can also add a custom map. I did a little custom map here with uh, clickable icons, so you can actually drill down uh, into these different little icons and bring up uh, the device or a group of devices as well. Back up here, one more. Uh, so from your summary page, you're seeing all this information, seeing your device CPU, uh, your latency, uh, you know, disk utilization, uh, bandwidth, in and out utilization. So from your page here, you can actually click on any of these device names, and it will bring you to uh, a little deeper into the, the device itself. So here you can see all the monitors, 
looks like here we have an issue with one of our memories. You can drill down a little bit more and see, okay, what kind of memory issues we're having. Looks like we have a few used memories, response time. We can actually click in a little deeper than this and actually pull in a report uh, for response time, free memory, uh, how much coverage we're getting, the availability. So nice little tool. You just turn it on, scan your network, and you're starting to capture all this good information. Uh, we'll go back to our dashboards. So pretty neat. Got a nice little dashboard here. All this is customizable. You can add other widgets. You can change columns as well. Uh, probably if you install this, you'll spend a lot of time here in the device uh, tab. Uh, here you can actually drill down into our different devices or you can actually create different groups. Uh, you can add a device here. You can actually do your discovery scans here as well. But uh, I created the Cisco 2 group here where I'm only adding some Cisco devices, some 2800, some 39, uh, 3750s. Uh, from here, we can actually drill down to this 2821. Looks like we have a little issue here. And it brings us to this uh, device list page. So here are all the different monitors we're monitoring. Looks like we have a couple of fans that we're having an issue with that we're, we're not seeing. Uh, from here, you can do this, what we call a knock view. So you can actually get a little better look at it. So here's a knock view, something you want to paste up. Uh, things that are red kind of shows up that there's issues. Things that are yellow shows that there's greens. Uh, you can go back to what we call the details view from here. Great stuff. So if you're looking for something a little bit more uh, friendly, that's, uh, you know, hey, let me just see what's here. And of course, all these links are clickable. So you can drill down right into it. Takes you down to this device page. Shows you kind of the response time, availability. Uh, from here, you can do things such as you can view a report as well. So nice, quick view report right from here. Get your response times, your availability, other good key point information. So let's get back to our dashboards. So another great thing about IP Monitor is that if you're monitoring something, if you're monitoring a CPU, if you're monitoring an interface bandwidth, if you're monitoring memory, you can actually have alerts set up. So if you, uh, if you're one of your P, one of your nodes goes down, you can have an alert sent to you, an email alert or something like that. Uh, another great thing about I, uh, IP Monitor is it has its own little report engine here. So right out of the box, really simple, you can get uh, reports either by like CPU, disk, memory, maybe downtime, ping availability. You can do it by groups. For instance, uh, let's say we want to see what our, our interface traffic looks like over maybe one of our Cisco groups that we created. We can do that really easy. Continue. And then here we have a nice little report with all our bandwidth usage uh, for all of our Cisco devices. So over the last, it looks like uh, 24 hours or so. Uh, also, you can do is you can actually create some custom reports as well. So if one of these canned reports doesn't quite work for you, maybe you want something a little bit more customized, maybe you want to add some like memory CPU or certain groups to a custom to a report and you don't want anything on the can, very easy to do. What's great about pretty much every SolarWinds product out there that you see when you want to do something new, it's going to actually take you through a wizard. So uh, IP Monitor, great tool, especially if you don't have anything that you're currently using. It's going to provide you all those key stats, those CPU, the memory, bandwidth, storage utilization. Uh, and it can do it quickly and very easily. So, uh, and it is customizable. You get a lot of bang for your buck. There's a lot of products that probably uh, might not be, might be a little bit more than this, might not do as much, but this is definitely something. If you're not using anything, it's uh, great to try and use, and I'm pretty sure you'll probably end up like that. Hey, Kevin, can I okay, so the next remind thing. folks to type questions into the Q&A tab if they have one, and one of them actually did come in, a question about how many components the IP monitor supports. Oh, that's a great question. I'll go ahead and I'll take that one out. So the first, so with IP monitor, the first 50, uh, Monitors are free, okay? Uh, once you go beyond that, there is a price. Don't ask me what the price is. I don't have it right off the top of my head. But you can go, the max is uh, 1,500 uh, monitors uh, is the max on it. Uh, after that, you probably want to look at one of our other products, same or NPM, but you're up to 1,500 different monitoring points uh, for IP monitor, and that's kind of your limitation. Any other questions that came in through the chat? I'm not following it. Do we have any other ones? That's fine. Excellent, excellent guys. Okay, so that's IP Monitor kind of in a nutshell. So nice, clean little tool, easy to install, or that you can install on your pretty much on your uh, workstation or maybe on a lightweight server. 
uh, it's going to provide you all those key stats, so all those key metrics is that you know uh, that you need to make sure that you know your network is healthy. So the next tool I want to go into is Kiwi Syslog. All right, so Kiwi Syslog has been around for for quite a while. Like I said, it's a good little Syslog tool. Uh, it pretty robust. Uh, Great thing about it is that you can actually send some different alerts, like an email or play a file. Uh, when I was a knock jock, um, I was working in a data center, and we actually had uh, TV syslog as our syslog tool. So, in any time like an interface or something went down, the head engineer would actually have TV syslog play uh, a wave file, and the guy was a Navy guy, so it played the submarine down, down, down. Anytime we had a node go down or an interface come down, go down that. Syslog trap. So a lot of good information that when you're that, that you can collect here, you know, with your syslogs, and then do a bunch of different things with it. Either send an alert, play a file, forward it to another syslog server, or something like that. So here, let's generate some syslogs and kind of show you how it works. So I have this cool little tool, this Kiwi syslog tool uh, generator tool. You can download another free tool so you can test your your syslog services. Uh, here we're going to send a couple of test services here, a couple of test logs. So here they come, pretty simple. You're going to collect these logs. They're coming in port 514 EDP, all good. Uh, so you can have this console up, watching it, and watching your logs come in. Great. So right now, we can do things. So right now, all, just any log that comes in, we have set up just to dump in this uh, display 00. So we have other logs that come in. Let's say something from uh, uh, your, all your bases belong to us. You know, they're just going to come in. Right. Let's say we want to do some kind of like filtering. So you can actually do some filtering where you don't want to see all the messages kind of dumped in. Maybe you just want to see maybe stuff coming in from your routers or some maybe coming in from your servers, servers or something within this message tag that you want to filter out and just have its own little display. Well, pretty simple to do. Uh, under filter, you go to setup. Okay. Uh, right now, we just have a default one that collects everything that you have. Uh, I created one earlier for what we call Fox Display. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're going to capture anything that's in the message text. I, I set up that's in the message text that has Fox in it. Uh, we're going to display it to our display Fox, uh, and we're going to log it to file and log it to our web server. So let's say, for instance, we don't want to see you know anything that's coming in from Fox, uh, or in general, we just want to see things that are coming in that has a message Fox in it. So here's my display Fox. I can actually come in here and change my little tool to brown fox comes in, and boom. So now I'm not showing, I'm only seeing things that have fox in the message. So if I do my uh, test message generator Kiwi syslog, they're not coming into my display fox, but they are going into my display zero, zero. So there you go. It's a nice little filter. Uh, you can also do highlighting. Let's say you do want to have everything come into it, but maybe you just want to have like something highlighted, like you know, Fox. You know, you can do that pretty simple. Highlighting, you have your highlight options, you just set your message, your Fox, a string to match, background, and boom. So now anything that can come in, you can cue off of maybe anything in this message title, maybe something in the priority, maybe anything that's critical, you want to add a tag to it, you want to highlight it, get your attention when it comes in. Uh, you can do it very easy, very quickly, so not hard to do. Uh, there is a web uh, interface to this. This is the console that you're looking at, so you'd actually have to load this on the console. But let's say you have maybe another team member that wants to use this as well, and maybe you have a lightweight server somewhere, or maybe another little desktop that's also being used. Well, you can actually load Kiwi Syslog there and use the web GUI and actually get to the web GUI. And here's the web GUI and what it looks like. And here you can do pretty much the same thing, mostly on the console. You, know, you have your events come in. Uh, you can do your filters where you only want to f filter certain uh, syslogs and, and to come into your uh, access. You can do things that's highlighting as well. So uh, nice to have, you know, so you don't have to actually remote desktop or load another application on your personal work, workspace or workstation. You can actually have this kind of hosted on a slight um, server and access it through the web GUI. Good little tools, been out for a long time. Uh, obviously, with the name Kiwi, it was uh, made by a guy in New Zealand. So, uh, any questions before I move on to our last Kiwi tool about um, Kiwi Syslog? 
Yeah, actually, there is a question, Kevin. It's the question is related to: Is there ability to forward logs from Kiwi Syslog to other products? Absolutely. Yeah. So you can do under. Let me show you here real quick. So under your actions, you can actually forward to another host. You can send to another syslog, log to a database. So yeah, you can you can actually offload these syslog chops uh, to another system or service. Yeah, I believe that's a strong use case right. with our federal enterprise customers, where they use it in a branch office location and forward logs into SEM or some other type of tool for a more enterprise <laughs> um, picture. So anyway, that that's there's no more questions. So please continue. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I actually had a customer uh, spec that out today where they had Kiwi Syslog and then they had our SIM product and it was on a uh, uh, air gap network, so uh, it was a good compliment. So, great deal. Uh, okay, uh, so that is Kiwi Syslog. Uh, good, good tool. If you need some kind of a logging solution, I definitely recommend this. Uh, it's been around for a very long time. It's uh, solid and very robust. Okay. So the next one I want to talk about is, let me close this out. I should have had this open beforehand, is Kiwi Cat Tools. Okay, so Kiwi Cat Tools is, we talked about this earlier, basically just backs up your network devices. Anything with a command line you can you can back up. So that's any Juniper, uh, any uh, Cisco devices, uh, pretty much uh, Adtran, anything with a command line uh, you can back up. Uh, you can also back them. You can also automate our, uh, your backups or put them on a schedule. So every night at two o'clock, you want to back up your devices. You know, you want to make sure you have a good, clean backup in case there's an issue with one of your network devices, or you have to do a hot swap and replace it. And all you have to do is, you know, boot it up and basically copy and paste the command back into the uh, to the network device. So here uh, you're seeing basically the work page of uh, Cat Tools. Uh, the left side here is the devices I have uh, already uh, associated in the cat tools. It looks like I have a uh, 3560, I believe that's a 2900 router. Uh, here on the right are the activities you can do, uh, the activities meaning, okay, uh, backing up, sending a command. There's quite a few different activities that you can, you can pull off. Let me kind of show you one of these, the different types of activities. Uh, you can test login, you can do a TFP log, you can update the banner, update passwords. Uh, when I was doing networking, that was always a big deal. We had uh, I worked for an enterprise company, and they had to go in every 30 days or 90 days and go and change the command line password. Uh, so we had one guy, the junior guy, go in and basically SSH to each one of those devices and change the command line console password. Uh, with Cat Tools, you can actually automate this. Uh, the biggest thing, first of all, with Cat Tools is doing backups, right? That's the most important. You want to make sure you back up your configs all the time. It's really simple to do in Cat Tools. Once you add the device to Cat Tools, you actually can create this activity that's pretty much uh, right out of the box. Uh, let's go take a look at this real quick. So uh, this is the activity. Some things, you know, you can set it up with a name, time, here's where you would schedule it, the devices that are a part of this activity, and then email and some other options. Like where is it going to, when we do the backups, you know, where are those uh, backups going to go? So let me look at something right here. Let's do a clear quick here. Okay, so let's say we want to go ahead and run a quick little backup. We want to force our backups. We run a backup now. We look down in our info log. It's doing it and performing our backups. Once it completes, we can go to view, and we can go to the configs folder here, and we open up our configs folder, and here are the backups of our two devices. So here we're doing our backups. Shows everything for that. What is this, a switch? The same thing here, this firewall. So, cool. Okay. So once you're doing the backup, another nice little feature of this is you can do a compare. So uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, I've had this come up, uh, someone does a change on the switch, maybe changes an access list, uh, and it breaks something, right? You go ask the junior guy, hey, did you do anything? No, I haven't made any changes. Well, you can actually kind of prove him right or wrong by once you're doing those backups, you can actually select different backups from different days and do a compare. And when it doesn't compare, it'll actually show you which lines are, you know, uh, inconsistent or that are different than the other. 
So here you can see, like, oh, well, this guy added a bunch of object groups that shouldn't have been there, or you know, added an interface. So now you have a good little tool that can do backups and do a compare uh, configs when there's different changes. Maybe I don't know why this switch works and this doesn't. Well, we can do a backup and do a compare and find line by line it, where there's a difference in that configuration. Great, great for troubleshooting and great for uh, for network management, ma management, making sure that all your devices are kind of cookie cutter uh, configs so you don't have a bunch of one-offs. We'll do all right, so the other activity I kind of wanted to highlight was you can actually send commands. So once you're backing up, you know, is, is one great piece, right? That's great, you can back up. But another piece of this is being able to do bulk changes, right? Doing those password changes, or maybe you know, changing a host name, or maybe seeing what version is running on across all your different devices, right? And then back, you know, if you don't have this, you'd actually have to SSH each device. You know, do a show ver, capture that, you know, put it into a log. Well, here under this command line sin uh, activity, if we go take a quick look at this one, here it looks just the same as the other one. You can time, but under options, you have your list of command where you can just do a show version, right? That's all it does. You actually type in the same command that you would on the in here that you would on the console of your of your router or switch or whatever. So we want to see this one. Let's take a look. We're going to do like a you know, show show version. We're going to do a run now. And once that runs, we can go here under our captured data folder, your default, in here. Show version. So now we have a printout. A show version. It's all automated. We sent that across multiple different devices. And we get it back. So nice, nice little tool here. A lot of functionality and features for, for the price point. Uh, if you're not backing up your configs on your network devices, definitely uh, load this up and start doing some backups and see how you like it. But there's also more to it because you can get you can do your comparison. You can actually send emails out as well. And there's also a little built-in TFTP server uh, that you can do as well. So if you need to do like certain upgrades or iOS upgrades, that's built in as well. So that covers most of the demos for the tools. Uh, just kind of going back, you know, these are, these are great tools. They've been out for a while. Uh, they're great, especially if you're not using anything currently or if you're in a really small environment, uh, because they do provide you all those key metrics uh, that you're looking for. It does those key things like backups, uh, you know, capturing those logs. So it's very, very good tools here for not a whole lot of money, and you get quite a bit out of it. So, but that was all I had for my demos. Let me send this back to Mark. Yeah, Kevin, that was great. Thanks so much for that. Yeah. Great. So here's some resources that are available. That, you know, these product pages have um, details on the products. There's downloads that you can download in trial versions. There's also documentation, um, data sheets, et cetera. And we've thrown in a few white papers here as well on just some basic monitoring techniques. We do have a whole bunch of other data and, and resources in our resource center, so please check that out as well. We've pretty much covered the Q&A that's, that's come in during the, the demo. If there's any other questions, please do type them into the Q&A panel, and we'll give you just another 30 seconds to, to go ahead and do so if you wish at this time. Seems like we have a fairly shy, quiet group here, Kevin. Let me, um, let's just go ahead and, and wrap things up. So here, this slide has information on how you can reach us. We have, um, you know, a bunch of different resources and contact information here. So feel free to follow us or contact us as you see fit. This is just a quick slide on SolarWinds. We, you know, the company's been around for 21 years and we were headquartered in Austin, but our, our government office is in Herndon, Virginia. We're a leader in network management and systems management, and we have just a ton of products. It's um, kind of our philosophy is to provide the kind of products and modular products that customers need so they can get the things that they need when they need it and not be forced into some big solu holistic solution if they don't want one. Um, anyway, thanks you so much for joining us today. Uh, there's another, just an advertisement for our, our, our Flat Camp, which is a virtual event that comes up uh, later this year. This is, it's basically like a two-day camp 
filled with video sessions. It's very technical. It's a very um, you know, head geek oriented kind of a thing. So feel, feel free to join that and, and register if you wish as well. And again, thanks so much for joining. Kevin, great job today and, and appreciate your support as well.